in Revelation, he's going to wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Do you know how many people are crying over Connecticut steel? And every time I even try to think about it, or even turn on the news and look at that thing and watch them children that have been killed, I can't help but turn it because I start crying. Do you know Jesus is going to wipe away all those tears? We can anticipate, we can eagerly await that. And we can have peace in our hearts because we're in a cursed earth and these things hurt us. These things are horrible. Whether we've got good health in our bodies and we're getting along pretty good or some of us are hurting and in pain with these bodies of flesh, we can anticipate that He's going to change that within a blink of an eye. This corruptible is going to put on incorruption. These old wrinkles and gray hair and all these things that happen to us because of the curse has come in. It's going to change. Amen. And we'll be brought back to our former glory just like Jesus. Think about that. We'll be able to walk through walls. Walk through a whole nother dimension. Did you know that? And still have a body that you can touch, just like Jesus. We'll be able to eat what we want to eat. Amen. Well, you know, <laughs> according to God's word, of course. But we'll be able to eat, not gain weight. Amen. <laughs> Anybody past 40 or 45 say, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> because it sticks to us after those ages. When we're young, some of us, we can eat all we want. I used to eat anything. But more now, it started going around that waistline. you got to change pants size. But when we're glorified, it's coming. It said in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That's the same thing Simeon was given. Some of us shall not die or taste of death before we see Jesus Christ coming through those clouds. And I believe it's our generation. I happen to believe what the Lord revealed to my own heart that we shall stand and see the glory of the Lord. Amen. Ooh, you amen. can see certain prophecies being fulfilled when Israel became a nation in 1948, 65 short years ago. I say short years because I only get it is short. <laughs> Used to, I thought 65 was old. Now I don't think 65 is old no more. As you get on up there, 65 is not that bad. <laughs> but 65 years. Now, God does things in the 70s. They lost their nation in 70 AD. They were in <coughs> for 70 years. And now they're about to be 70. And there's prophecies saying that that generation shall not pass before they see the return of the Son of Man. Oh, I believe we're here, y'all. I'm not kidding you. Some of us shall not taste death until we see Jesus, the glory of the Lord. Just like Simeon. He believed that so much he kept him just in the Bible, he was expecting it. So when he, what did he do? Expecting this, being just in the Bible, being faithful to the Lord's work, what did he do? It says, verse 27, verse 27, <laughs> and he came by the Spirit into the temple. Let me stop here for a minute. If we would come by the Holy Ghost into the sanctuary, if we would come by the Holy Ghost to church, amen, then we would see Jesus. It's because many times we've come walking in the flesh. Say it or not, we all walk in the flesh sometimes. We come up in here with fleshly thoughts, fleshly things on our mind, and we forgot maybe to pray for a while and get in the Spirit at the house and walk in the Spirit and be looking and thinking in thoughts of the things of God. And, and we don't walk in the Spirit. And so when we walk in here, we don't see Jesus. We're like, well, I didn't really enjoy that today. I, mean, I don't know about that word. My goodness, buddy, I'm telling you, every time this word comes forth, if you're in the Spirit, you're going to see Jesus. Amen. If you walk in the Spirit, amen. If you come by the Spirit, amen. Simeon came by the Spirit. He couldn't be filled with the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit was upon him. And he could let the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit into his life upon him so he could see Jesus. If he was walking in the flesh in that temple, he never would have seen Mary and Joseph carrying Jesus, I'm telling you. But he came. Why would the Bible say that? If I mind... Why would the Bible say that? The Bible says that for a reason. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let thou, thy servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Did you know when you see the salvation of the Lord, you finally will have peace in your heart? When those come to Jesus, when they repent 
and come to Jesus, the war is over. That's what Isaiah 40 was talking about. The consolation, the comfort of Israel. What he was waiting on is the war is over. The war between us and God is over. Jesus paid the price and brought us and reconciled us back to, Christ, back to God Almighty. And that war is over. Not only that, the war is actually over with the enemy. Because we got the victory through Christ Jesus over all flesh, over everything the enemy tries to do, over addictions, over all these things, we got the power of God inside of us, Emmanuel, through what Christ did at the cross. Amen. And he says, now I've seen your salvation. There's no peace on this earth. And we can't find peace anywhere. And you're not going to find peace in a bottle. You're not going to find Amen. peace in a pill bottle. You're not going to find peace in a psychiatrist's office. Whoa. You're not going to find peace going over with everybody on the telephone. Well, look, I'm, I'm disturbed today. I'm going to talk about so-and-so. They're getting on my dag on nerves, and I'm going to say something about it. And, and you're not going to find peace there. It just keeps stirring up animosity in our heart. <coughs> oh, when you come to Jesus, and you give it to Him, you can finally have peace, because peace is only found in Jesus. Amen. We try to find peace everywhere but Christ sometimes. And He's saying, in me, you shall have peace. It says, John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Y'all hear that? My peace I give unto you. That's following His Word. His peace is following the Word. His peace is following. When you follow the Word, you will have peace. I promise you. Not as the world giveth. There you go. Not in tranquilizers. Not in counseling. Not as the world giveth. Or it's supernatural. Praise the Lord. By the Holy Ghost give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither, neither let it be afraid. And he says, John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. and the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So even through our tribulations of the world, we can have peace if we keep our eyes stayed upon Him and not about all the things happening around us. Now that word comes forth quite often. But we need that word. We need that word today more than ever. Because Satan has cranked up his attack. The dragon is wrong. He's come down to the earth and he knows his time is short. It says in Revelation chapter 12. And he's wroth with the saints. And he's trying to cause us to fight one another. He's trying to cause us to hate one another. He's trying to cause us to divide from one another. He's trying to cause families to hate one another. He's trying to cause every little thing of strife he can in your life. So he can tear you apart. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly. He comes to give abundant life, but it's only found in Him. As our mind is stayed upon Him, Isaiah 26.3, we have perfect peace. But when 